viscosity using the variable pressure head method our aim of the experiment is to determine the viscosity of the given liquid using the variable pressure head method we are provided with a burette which can be filled and the liquid is flowing through a given capillary tube and a Hertz apparatus is given to determine the density of the liquid and using the mercury pellet method we are determining the radius of the capillary tube now coming to the principle of uh, variable pressure head method to find the viscosity uh, the pressure head in which the liquid is flowing is calculated using the formula p is equal to h rho g where h is given by h1 plus h2 by 2 we mentioned h1 is the height of the liquid column from the capillary tube initially then h2 is the level 2 up to which the liquid is flowing that is h2 from that h1 plus h2 by 2 gives the average pressure head and p is equal to h rho g then the viscosity is calculated using the formula pi p r is to 4 t by 8 l v now instead of p we are substituting that is h rho and g so the formula becomes pi rho g r is to 4 by 8 l h t by v so in that equation we can see that for a given capillary tube the length is a constant and the radius is a constant and for the given liquid rho is a constant so pi rho g r is to 4 by 8 l is a constant so the variable quantity is h t by v where h is the average pressure head and t e the time of flow of a certain volume v we also we can take uh, different values or a constant value for a certain range or for a certain volume of liquid uh, for flowing the pressure head may be different then we are determined the time so our aim is to find h t by v so that is the apparatus arrangement is here a burette is arranged vertically and the capillary tube is attached with the help of a rubber tube a stopper is here uh, when the stopper is open the liquid flows through the capillary tube that is a capillary flow is there now here it is marked if you are taking a range uh, 10 to 20 if you are taking a range 10 to 20 that is the volume is equal to 10 cc then h1 is the height measured from the top of the capillary tube uh, from the capillary tube to the range to the level 10 and similarly h2 is measured from the capillary tube to uh, level 20 that is h2 so that is h1 and h2 now to start with the experiment uh, we are fixing with the range for example 10 to 20 then the stopper is opened when the liquid meniscus is at 10 we start a stopwatch the liquid is flowing and when the liquid meniscus just touches 20 the stopwatch is stopped then the difference of time or the time from the stopwatch gives the time of flow for a range of uh, 10 cc that is from 10 to 20 so that is the experimental arrangement or how we are performing the experiment now from that we can determine uh, we obtain t value and h value and v value we can determine the value of hd by v then for different ranges say 20 to 30 or 30 to 40 or from a range 5 to 15 or different values of v we can repeat the experiment and each time we can calculate hd by v and then we determine the value of a viscosity using the formula pi rho g r is to 4 by 8 l hd by v this is the table column uh, initially we, we fix the range so here we are taking the same value of v so that the range is from 10 to 20 20 to 30 30 to 40 etc so the volume is uh, 10 centim um, cc 10 cc then time of flow is for the range 10 to 20 the time of flow is calculated two, two times the time of flow is determined first and second the mean time is calculated h1 is measured up to 10 and h2 is up to the level 20 so h1 and h2 we obtain from that h is calculated h1 plus h2 by 2 and ht by is v is calculated the experiment is repeated for another range say 20 to 30 30 to 40 40 to 50 etc and we obtain the mean value of ht by v now again using the Hertz apparatus we determine the uh, relative density and then the density of the liquid then using the density and uh, again we want to calculate the radius of the capillary tube so for the radius of the capillary tube uh, we are using the mercury pellet method so in the mercury pellet method we are using the formula radius r is equal to root of m by pi ld that means now inside that given capillary tube we are taking a pellet of mercury 
that mercury is having a radius same as that of the capillary tube so the volume of mercury is pi r square l for that uh, pellet of mercury the volume is pi r square l its density is 13.6 into 10 to the power of 3 so pi r square l into d gives the value of mass so radius can be calculated using the formula root of m by pi l d now for that initially a watch glass is weighed we are using a sensibility balance uh, the resting points are determined r0 and r1 so a watch glass is weighed initially we have obtained the watch glass weight as w1 then the mercury pellet is transferred to the watch glass that weight is measured that is w2 and this w2 minus w1 gives the mass of the mercury and from that the radius of the capillary tube is determined so that is known as the mercury pellet method so from these all known values we determine the value of rigidity modulus and sorry uh, the coefficient of viscosity uh, we obtain the result coefficient of viscosity of the given liquid so this is our experimental setup a burette is arranged perfectly vertical and attached to the burette a capillary tube is arranged here the capillary tube is arranged perfectly horizontal now we want to find uh, how much time the liquid is taking to flow over a range say 0 to 10 or 0 to 5 so initially i fill the liquid above 0 level then we are opening the stop core here the liquid flows there should be a capillary flow when the liquid meniscus just uh, touches the zero level or zero marking we will start the stopwatch and we want to find accurately the time so remember we can open the stop stop cork and the liquid level should be above the zero level and when mm -hmm. the zero level just touches the liquid meniscus just touches the zero we start the stopwatch and in when it touches the 10 then we will stop the stopwatch and we will find the time so we can start i think now we are opening the stop cork you can see the liquid is flowing the liquid is flowing now it is touching here so i started the stopwatch zero now it is coming to different levels when it touches the level 10 we will stop the stopwatch and then we are getting the time for the range zero to 10 now it is 10 step stop now i am getting a time of say 17 second uh, for the liquid flow from the level 0 to the level 10 so we want to repeat the experiment once again for that we will fill the burette once again to the same level above uh, above 0 above 0 it is filled now again when it touches the 0 level we can start once again so that means we can we are finding two times we are ready touches 0 started now the liquid is flowing when it touches 10 we will stop the stopwatch and it is coming to 10 ok 10 again we are getting a time of 18 second early we obtained a time 17 second now I obtained a time of 18 second now we can repeat the experiment for different ranges for that next time I am taking from 10 to 20 two times we are determining the time then 20 to 30 30 to 40 and 40 to 50 etc so for different ranges we are determining time again uh, we want to calculate or we, are, we want to find out or we want to mark the value of h1 and h2 we already mentioned h1 is the height from the top of the capillary tube to the initial level so initially we are doing the experiment from for a range 0 to 10 so up to the level 0 from the capillary tube that is h1 and the reading between the top of the tube to the level 10 gives the value of h2 so we are using two scales uh, the two scales one is kept vertical like this then the other one is kept horizontal to the level 0 so here i am getting a scale reading of say 73 73 then top of the scale we are getting a reading of say 15 then that 73 minus 15 gives the value of h1 then h2 again in the mark level of 10 we are keeping the scale then i'm getting a reading of 62 then this 62 minus uh, this reading uh, 15 gives the value of h2 
So, for the range 0 to 10, we obtain H1 and H2. Similarly, when we are doing the experiment for the range uh, 10 to 20, then also we are marking H1 and H2. So, in each case, uh, we are taking H1 and H2 so that we can find out the mean value of H. Now, to determine the density of the liquid, we are using the Hertz apparatus. The Hertz apparatus is a U tube shaped, two limbs are there. Uh, both the two limbs are immersed in the liquid and in the water. Then, by we can raise the liquid to a certain height. Now, we are measuring the height of the liquid column and height of the water column. Height of the liquid column means from the top of the liquid surface to which the liquid rises. Now, it is 26 here. So, that is height of the liquid column is 26. Similarly, we are finding how much the water is raised. Now, here the water is raised to a value of say 26.2 here. So, we obtain the height of the liquid column and height of the water column. That we can repeat many times by changing the uh, height of the liquid by using the clamp here. Now, the height of the liquid column and similarly the height of the water column changes. So, we are taking the new value of uh, height of the liquid column. Now, here it is uh, 19 only. Similarly, we are taking the height of the liquid column that is 19.2. So, we are repeating for many times or two or uh, four or five times and from that we can determine the relative density and then the density of the given liquid. To find the radius of the capillary tube by the mercury pellet method, we are having a mercury is taken inside the capillary tube. Now, here I have already taken the mercury in the capillary tube. We are having a watch glass. The watch glass is already weighed. I know the weight of the watch glass. Now, the mercury, the length of the mercury column is measured here. Now, the mercury is up to here. From this one end to up to here, mercury is filled. The mercury pellet is having a length of 11 centimeter here, 11 centimeter. So, we are, I am having a mercury column of length L, capital L is 11 centimeter. Now, this mercury is transferred to the glass plate. Now, the mercury is transferred to the glass plate. Now, we are finding the mass of the glass plate plus mercury again. Then, from this mass, we are subtracting the initial mass, the mass of the glass plate alone, we obtain the mass of the mercury. From the mass of the mercury by our formula, we can determine the radius of this particular capillary tube that we used here in the viscosity apparatus, the capillary flow method. Now, we will discuss the observations that we obtain for the uh, viscosity arrangement to find the value of HD by V. So, we performed the experiment for a range 0 to 10, 10 to 20, etc. So, the volume is fixed that is 10 cc that is 10 into 10 to the power of minus 6. Now, for the range 0 to 10, the time of flow we obtain 26 first when it is repeated 27, the mean time is 26.5. Then the height measured from the capillary tube to the 0 level is 66 and the height measured from uh, the capillary tube to the level 10 is 55. Then the average value of H is 0 0.605. Then H T by V obtain H T and V obtain so that is 16.303. Then it is repeated for another range 10 to 20. We obtain the time value and H value, H1 and H2 value and H value and we obtain H T by as 15.35. Now it is repeated for another range say 20 to 30, 30 to 40, uh, 40 to 50 and 52. Uh, sorry here I changed another range say the range is changed to uh, 5 to 50. Now, here also you can see that it is also possible, there is no need of taking 40 to 50 or 50 to 60 is not possible there. So, I am, uh, in order to repeat the experiment, I am taking another range say 5 to 50, then also the volume is 10 cc. So, here we obtain the time as 28 and 29, the mean time is 28.5. Now, you can see 60.5 is uh, the H1 value from the capillary tube to the level 5, the range 5, so the marking 5, then 49.8 is the H2 value or height from the capillary tube to the uh, marking 15. Similarly, it is repeated for another value say 15 to 25. Then also I obtained the time and H value, I calculated the value of HD by V. So, I obtained the mean HD by V as 15.72. Then using the Hertz apparatus, 
we mentioned we have the height of water column and similarly height of liquid column this calculated and the density is calculated so you obtain the density then here this is the tableau column for the uh, mass measurement of the mercury pellet method when the watch glass is weighed before that uh, for the given balance we want to find the resting point r0 so here we obtain r0 as 9.833 for that we are taking the pointer reading on the left side three times and right side three two times the mean is calculated that is r0 when 10 milligram is added we are getting the resting point 0 0 0 and 1 and the right side we are getting 17 and 70 and the mean is 8.666 that is r1 from that we are calculating the value of sensibility 0 0.01 divided by r this one is r0 and this one is r1 so that we obtain the sensibility of the balance for a mass of uh, 10 milligram then when the watch glass is placed we have again obtained the resting point and the correct weight is determined that is 15.347 uh, then watch glass plus mercury is measured that is 15.8938 so the difference gives the mass of mercury uh, from that we obtain the radius of the mercury is calculated as uh, using the formula root of uh, m by pi ld it is determined the radius is determined then we calculated the coefficient of viscosity is calculated as uh, we obtain a value of 0 0.8 uh, 0 0.12 into 10 to the power of minus 3 uh, that is the result of our uh, viscosity experiment.